Okay guys, so my husband messed with the uh, the thing that I put my, my phone on to do videos. And now I don't have anything to put my phone on to do videos. <laughs> so we're gonna have to just wing it for this one. Um, we're going to be making lemongrass kiwi cassis bars using clear melt and pour and white melt and pour. Um, we're going to be using the lemon peel um, mica, so you'll be able to see how mica looks in clear melt and pour and also in a white base. It, it's actually really cool. I'm not going to be using two different colors, so you'll actually be able to see the difference in the bar itself. So let me just get all of this cut up and melt it and we'll start pouring. Alright, I'll see you in a minute. Another thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is um, this infrared therm thermometer. I got it from Amazon for I think about $18. They're not that expensive. They don't have to be. Um, it scans the surface temperature of the item that you're scanning, obviously, and um, it helps you control your pour, what temperature you pour at, making sure that you know, it doesn't uh, go in too thick or too hot and ruin your design. You can also use it for cold process if you are trying to control the uh, the temperature of your pour. Uh, it's a really good investment. You should look into it. Okay, let's check this out. All right, it's around 160, which is not so bad. Uh, the white molten pour usually stays hot for a little bit longer. We want to pour this at a cooler temperature so that it doesn't mix with the white stuff, which is over there and it still needs to be melted. So we can actually leave this alone for a little while and um, I'm gonna melt the, uh, the clear stuff and we'll be back. Okay, this one's not as hot as the white. Okay, so we can add the mica. I want to add the, um, the scent at 120 because the the heat is just gonna obliterate the scent otherwise so it's still a little high for both um we're gonna add the mica and then we're just gonna wait for it to cool off i'm gonna pour it a little bit less than 120 try to keep those colors independent as much as possible um if it starts to chunk up a little I will blast it for 10 seconds in the microwave, um, but <laughs> if you're going to try to do this, please try not to boil your glycerin soap, because if you boil it, it hardens, it becomes crumbly, it's very unattractive, and it's, ugh, it's really bad. So let's just keep going. So this is what it looks like in the clear. You can definitely see the glimmer. It's really very pretty. And the, um, the glycerin soap um, really does actually keep a lot of these uh, characteristics when it solidifies, which is really nice. Uh, and especially depending on like, there's different types of clear glycerin that you can, um, you can get. Uh, this one's not the clearest, but it's pretty good for what I use it for, so I'm very happy with it. But you can always go and try to find like super clear stuff that you can put embeds in that's like glass and stuff. It's But it this one is really nice. I mean, oof, that's, oof. I love it. I could look at it all day. Super pretty. All right. Now check this out, I added the same amount of mica to both bases. The white one is very creme de menthe, and this one looks like, like an awesome witch's potion. So you can definitely see that there is crazy different uh, kind of reaction for both. 
and I love it, but it's, <laughs> if you want to experiment, like you're gonna get some really interesting uh, results if you, if you do one and the other for the same type of mica. Okay, so they're both in the 120s and I, I have to pour them and I'm really nervous because <laughs> I don't want them to blend. I want them to stay as, um, as separate as possible. I've already added the, um, the scent. I'm going to be putting the calculation in the video so you can see how much of a percentage, uh, 30, I believe it's 32 ounces of soap need um for the different uh variations of scent uh so i'm gonna have to do this one-handed because i don't have a stand for my video thank you very much my husband to you all right so let's do this thing i hope you can see because i can't okay we're gonna do a little bit of this it's getting chunky i'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible because it's chunky oh Oh my god, there's so much skin. Oh, I'm gonna have to grab a few more molds. Oh no! Okay, okay, no! Okay. <laughs> this is science, guys. This is science. Okay, so we're just gonna... Oh, it's, it's doing pretty things. Doing this one-handed is not easy, by the way. Oh, here we go. Now this mold that I got off of Amazon, it holds about three and a half ounces of uh, soap. So that is um, yeah, about the average size of a bar. So these should be pretty good. Let me fill this one up a tiny bit. <laughs> Other than that disaster in the corner, this is basically what I was going for. So um, you see the difference? Oh, let me spray it. I don't have a lot of alcohol left. Thank you, Corona. Yeah, okay, so when these actually harden, we can um, cut the sides off. Um, we can actually take some of that and uh, reuse it, stick it back in one of these suckers and melt it and uh, fill up more molds. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with this. I'm sorry the pour is so ugly, guys. But I'm very happy. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out of the mold. Okay, so I'm wearing my gloves, so I have to turn the video on with my nose. So please excuse me if this gets weird. But these are way too big for my hands and I can't find anything smaller because I'm I'm a mutant apparently. So they're finally strong enough that I can take them out uh, without damaging them. So let's try to do this one-handed. All right. It's gonna be the pretty part. So again, you have to play around with the temperatures. I poured really cold, trying to keep them separate. And uh, remember that the more the more you use the bar, the more you're gonna see the uh, the different colors as you keep going. Um, I could have poured uh, the white base. A little hotter, maybe. Uh, let's try this one. It kind of looks like a turtle. It's kind of cute. Oh my god, I can't hold this. But I like the back. And remember, like the the back might be a little chunky. I might have a little bit of bubbles in it that your alcohol didn't get to. You can always use a planer or some sort of like shaving. Uh, fruit shaver device to sort of um, 
like flatten out the back and and get those uh swirls out real nice and make that like the focal point of your soap it doesn't have to always necessarily be the bottom part of the mold you know you can be creative about this this is this is your art this is what you want and you can always um just oh this one's gonna be a little bit more oh. Uh, you can always just do the two colors and then melt a little bit of clear and then do a layer of clear on top to sort of uh, smooth it out and magnify it. Like when you do resin and you want to you wanna bring the colors out, right? So I think these are pretty good. They're pretty strong. They're, they're nice and solid. They're good big bars. They fit in your hand really well. Maybe not in this glove. <laughs> um, I could have poured a little hotter, but I mean, for the for the the, the 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 basis of this video, you understand how this works. And I've been doing for doing all of this one-handed. I think I did a pretty good job. Great. I could do this with two hands. I think I would have done a much better job. Ah! See? That one's pretty. I like that one. Alright, so, um, tell me what you think. Let me know if you want me to do another tutorial. This one was not as bad as the last one, I think. Um, I do have uh, plans in the future to do a butterscotch butter beer, chocolate frog inspired uh, soap bar. So let me think, let me know what you think about that and um, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I gotta turn this off with my nose. Bye!